Today we're going to talk about holes in your preps. Evaluate what you have and we're going to look at some of the things that might help you to kind of at least get an idea and to prep with a balance. I base all of my preps on the rule of threes and it's a really simple process and hopefully this will help you to build your preps. Uh, we have three seconds without hope and I think putting together a plan and some supplies gives you some hope. It gives you some time. Uh, it, three hours in harsh conditions. Now, especially here in the south where I live, uh, it, the cold doesn't get quite as bad, but out in the elements, you have three hours in the harsh conditions. Uh, then you have three days without water, three weeks without food, and medical supplies, of course, uh, filter through all of that time and also a way to defend yourself your property and to protect your family. No wonder prepping can be confusing. I mean there's so many things you need uh, to sustain life, to live not necessarily even a normal life but just to live day to day. And so one of the big things I do is the rule of threes and what we're going to do is go through each of the rule of threes and to me some of the categories that you need to prepare for. The things I'm going to show you are not necessarily that specific brand or that type. That's something that you need to decide. I mean, there's a ton of different options for each category. And there's a ton of different budgets for each category. So what we're going to look at is just the main things that you need, the categories, and for you to plan from that. Now, whether you have an AR-15, a Mosin Nagant, a lever action rifle, or an AK-47, you need plenty of ammunition, which I suggest a minimum of a thousand rounds, and you need at least six magazines if that if you have a semi-automatic rifle, and you need some way to support your system. But guys, the problem is, is this is typically what we already have together. I mean, we have our guns, we have our ammunition, and our magazines, and all the tactical fun stuff. That is one thing that we need to be more aware of, is balancing out. Guys, before you put all the stuff that's on this AK-47, buy medical supplies, buy your food, take care of your water, get those things taken care of in balance. And as you start to build those, then you can start to work on your firearm. Of course, obviously there are 308 rifles, there are other hunting bolt action rifles, and there's shotguns. I mean, there's so many different guns that you can choose uh, as your main go-to rifle. But again, guys, balance is the key. And one thing is, don't spend $1,000 on a rifle and have three boxes of ammunition. Now, EDC is extremely important, and that's something that you should have on you at all times. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the details, but having a concealed carry is really important. And the reason why you need to have a license is because if you get caught in a bug out situation, you could run into legal problems, especially if you have to use it. Having a flashlight, a knife, of course, your car keys, your billfold, a phone, uh, some way to start fire and a watch is really nice. Glasses, if you need that, or whatever the things that you need, and a good pen. These are the things that I carry with me at all times. Now, having a bug out bag, of course, is a big theme. Whether you call it a bug out bag, go bag, get home bag, you know, whatever you want to call it, or you can have different bags. Actually, this is one of my go bags. I keep this on trips, but if I have a I have a dedicated bug out bag that's larger and has a lot more capability. Uh, this is just bare minimum uh, for an emergency situation. And all my family each have bags similar to this. The great thing about these bags is you have it all together in one place. If you have a situation, you grab it and you know you're ready to go. Medical supplies transcends the rule of threes. And we have a couple of trauma kits here that I keep with me, especially when I'm doing shooting. Or I have other kits that I have for my shooting range bag or my EDC kits, even if it's just a band-aid. Here's a tub of just some first aid supplies. This is our family medical bag. Uh, we take this on trips. If we're going with groups, a lot of times we work with youth and we take this with us. Uh, also, here is an AMP3. This is a really cool system for groups. And uh, I've done a full review on this. It's just an incredible setup. Here's the setup all rolled out. And as you can see, I mean, everything is super organized. Uh, this is USN ER Docs when it put this together and I highly recommend uh, a lot of his kits because he really knows what he's doing. He's an emergency room doctor. My good friend Skinny Medic as well does really great kits, a lot of personal IFACs and things like that and I'll have his link also down below. Now on the list of rule of threes, air is three minutes and so being able to breathe <laughs> is, is important. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to go with a gas mask but that is really serious conditions. Uh, you know, some of these little filters, especially when dust and debris are flying around, that helps. And there are much better options for this. 
you know, this is not a comprehensive list. This just gives you some ideas. A good bandana is really good to have with you in your kits uh, because you can use this for so many reasons, but one of the things is to cover your face, especially with dust and debris. Now, three hours in harsh conditions comes next, and you know, having an emergency space blanket is bare minimum. These things are cheap, and they're going to tear really quickly. Uh, you can go with something more like this little tarp, and it has the uh, mylar inside, which will give you double protection. This will also protect you from the rain, having a good poncho. Uh, this is an emergency space bivy, and then I have one of the the Hex Tarp 1.0. Uh, this is also has the emergency space on the outside. And, you know, sleeping bags or here's a little um, hammock. And then, of course, always, because these are so cheap, a good heavy meal trash bag. Now, the rule of three, three days without water. Uh, guys, you need to be able to filter your water. Uh, one of the problems is a lot of times there are creeks and streams and, that look really clean, uh, but you can get uh, cryptosporidium or giardia and get sick. And, you know, you could actually die from it, but you don't want to be sick during a grid down situation. And so these are some ways to filter water, but uh, a lot of this is for on the go. But really, if you're out and about working, staying hydrated is really important. Having a storage of water is good. One of my best recommendations for filtering water is the Big Berkey, uh, and they make a number of different setups. This will actually filter 6,000 gallons of water and uh, we use this on a regular basis even though we're on a city water with the chlorine but this is really good to be able to filter your water now i have a video linked right here where a couple of years ago i did a rain catchment system uh, using big blue barrels and so that's a great way to be able to harvest water that's good and clean and of course you'll want to have something like the big berkey to be able to filter that water now having Mountain House or Wise Food or some of these other eFoods Direct, that's great. In fact, it's really convenient and easy to do. MREs are great as well, but you need to have some really good food stocks put back. Now having long-term food storage is critical, uh, especially if you know, you're planning to uh, really bunker in. And uh, this has a 25 year shelf life and there's a ton of it back there. Also regular canned food and things like that that you want to have stored back that you can just get ready at the grocery. Now, not only having food stored back, but also emergency seed. And you need to really be growing a garden if you're serious about self-reliance. And, uh, you know, Texas Ready does a good job, emergency seed bank. Having standard seeds. I keep all my seeds right here. Um, and, you know, just it's just great to have them. But you need to be practicing now, not when a grid-down situation hits. Flashlights are vital, and one of the reasons is because at night you need to be able to illuminate if you have trouble, uh, being able to see things out in the dark. So searching or you know self-defense or whatever it is, uh, having backup batteries, even having rechargeable batteries if you have some kind of power source. Having backup generators and keeping them maintained. Communication is very important. Being able to get news from the outside, of course, you know you have your standard cell phone. We get used to that. But in a grid down situation, that may not be an option. Uh, having small little portable radios, you know, family radios, that's great and all. Uh, but having a ham radio is definitely an advantage or even CBs, which are fairly short ranged. Uh, and then having receivers like this small little radio to get news and information. And then this little small radio here that I'm getting ready to do from County Comp. This is a great little radio you can get all kind of information from, uh, even shortwave. So these are just some different options for communications. Of course, having a stock of toilet paper is is critical uh, we keep toilet paper stored but this is just some that we have uh, available and uh, that that is something really to think about now one thing that I failed to mention is a way to heat your home whether it's with fire or if you have some kind of gas logs or some way to store up some fuel uh, but to me wood stove is probably the best uh, you know as far as being able to renew it in a long-term situation one of the big themes with the prepping community is to bug out or to bunker in and which is the best option. Uh, let me say, hands down, bunkering in is the best option. Uh, unless it's a real emergency situation to where your area is vulnerable. Uh, being in that area and bunkering in with your supplies, you don't wanna leave your stuff behind, all the preps that you put together to go to an unknown location. And when I say unknown, a lot of times you don't know what's happening on the way. Now, you need to have a bug out plan because even in your situation, you never know what's gonna happen. And one of the things that I wanna warn you about 
particularly for those that are preppers, is that be careful not to make a scenario in your mind of how it's going to go down. Because I can promise you this, it won't be anything like you think. Now chances are there's many of you out there that have, have a lot of input into this. So down in the comments below you can expand or maybe there's some ideas and some things that I've missed. And um, it'll help me, it'll help those that watch this video. So hopefully this has helped you to identify the holes that you have in your preps and to really kind of focus some attention on those areas. Guys, well balanced is really important having the supplies you need uh, when you need them. And none of us know what to expect. There's no way I can't tell the future. Obviously our news and our even our weather can't even tell what's gonna happen next week. And so be versatile, be willing to improvise, and just be prepared. So identifying the holes in your preps, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Uh, a lot of times and there's a okay. and leave your comment okay bug out or bug in uh, then we have the texas radio okay. these are radio that you can get all kind of different inter intermittent uh, one's a trauma kit one's just has a lot of great uh just okay. uh you know in a winter type situation okay. please leave them in the comments below and uh let uh, other 